Okay, last up we have Nick Shao, who is the CEO of Green Charge Networks. Okay, um, it's always fun to go last. Um, but uh, well, thanks for the invitation to, to speak today. And it's, uh, it's really a privilege to be here. Um, so Green Charge Networks, a little bit about, about us, who we are. Uh, we're a Santa Clara-based company, and we've been around for four years. Um, we do behind-the-meter distributed energy storage systems, and, uh, and we sell to commercial and industrial customer base. Um, we have 20 installations coming up in the next four months. So we, uh, we are hiring like, uh, you know, we couldn't keep up with the demand, really. Um, and we have a number of large profile customers that we're installing over the next several months. And some of them are repeat customers as well. Um, so here is how we looked at the market um, going into this four years ago. We thought to ourselves, well, you know, there any, any commodity you can think of uh, it, it, there is a storage mechanism for it. You know, water towers, right? You know, food, your, your, your refrigerator, your home, and uh, money, uh, data. You know, there's a storage mechanism for all of these things, except for energy. I mean, energy, for the most part today, is still uh, produced and consumed right on the spot, right? You can't really store this stuff. Uh, and the, the problem that it creates is, um, is, is something that I'll explain through a low duration curve from Con Edison. So you can tell I'm an, I'm an engineer at heart uh, by explaining problems with low duration curves. So this is a low duration curve from Con Edison back in 2011. So Con Edison of New York, they hit a all time demand uh, record of 13.2 of gigawatts in the summer of 2011. Um, but if you analyze, uh, you know, the distribution grid and how much time was spent at each hour, uh, it's something like, you know, seven hours was above 13 gigawatts. Uh, you know, 36 hours was above 12 gigawatts. You know, out of 7,000, uh, out of 8,760 hours in a year, right? So, uh, so the actual amount of time that the distribution grid experiences those spikes is very little. But nonetheless, Con Edison, a utility, has to spend a lot of money to upgrade the distribution grid to make sure that it can handle that throughput. So Con Edison's uh, annual budget is something like $2 billion to do the O&M on, on the grid. And they also have a construction uh, budget of also on par, you know, $2 billion. And a lot, of, a lot of that money is going towards handling peak demand. So, uh, so that causes getting passed down somehow, right, to the, to the customers. Um, so for a commercial industrial customers, uh, their, their bill is split between energy and demand. And uh, for the most part, the demand is just like Andy was pointing out, the demand portion of their bill is going up. Whereas actually, as, as it turns out, for PG&E, for Southern Cal Edison, uh, San Diego Gas and Electric, uh, cents per kilowatt hour has been trending downwards at about 4% a year for the past decade, whereas dollar per kilowatt has been going up at 7% a year for the past decade. And this is information that you could pull off yourself from just going through tariff books from the different utilities. Um, and so more and more, if you look at the pie chart the, for commercial industrial customers, more and more over time, uh, the, the portion of their bill is, is, is demand charges. And a lot of our customers, uh, you know, half of their demand charges and uh, half of their bill in the summer months are, are demand charges. Um, so, you know, so uh, this is just, just one of our customers, what their bill looks like. I apologize, you probably can't see the fine print. But for this customer, it's literally 75% of their summer bill was, was demand charges. So it's, it's, a, it's a real and acute problem. Um, now, here's what we have done about it. So this is, I'm going to show you a number of slides of just previous installations that we have done, as well as uh, installations to come. Um, so going back to 2012, uh, you know, we have, we have had a system running for, uh, for two plus years, um, you know, integrated with solar. Um, so just to explain the graph a little bit, 
uh, the red is what the utility meter would have seen. The blue is how we're artificially manipulating the low profile over the course of a month. The horizontal axis here is a month. Um, the green is our energy storage system charging and discharging, and the orange is a little solar system that we have installed at this facility. This happens to be uh, a 7-Eleven location in New York City. Um, so there's a solar system on the roof there, uh, you know, energy storage, and there's also a couple of level 2 EV, fast tra EV chargers at the site as well. Um, uh, in other systems that we, we, that we deployed, uh, we, in fact, we integrated a DC fast charger into the, into the meter. Now, um, uh, you know, DC fast chargers, for those that are not familiar, it's a 30 <coughs> kilowatt appliance. So for this little 7-Eleven, their average load is 30 kilowatt. So, you know, this DC fast charger, this single appliance almost doubled their, their peak load. Um, so, uh, same, so same thing here, if you look at the chart, the red is what the meter would have measured, the blue is how we are manipulating the low profile. And you can see that every time the yellow spikes, the yellow is DC fast charger, then, uh, you know, you, you see the, the red kind of following, kind of following on and, and, and hitting a, a peak for that facility. Um, you also see how we're doing the, the blue. Um, this is, by the way, captured from a couple of months ago. Um, you see that square wave pattern there? Um, so, uh, as it turns out, the utility charges the customer at a different rate, the dollar per kilowatt wise, at different times of the day. So, uh, the horizontal axis here is a week and a time. And the reason why we do the square wave thing is because we're trying to, our software is trying to make the battery pack as small as possible. Maximum economic gains using, uh, you know, a battery that's uh, that sized appropriately. A battery is what costs money, right? Software doesn't. Um, so by artificially manipulating the subpoints then that we're trying to hit at different times of the day, that's how we can maximize the economic returns with a given size battery. So fast forward to some of our recent installations. This is um, a couple of projects that we did uh, recently at the city of Redwood City. Uh, the, the picture on the left there is from a parking garage. Uh, the picture on the right is at the Redwood City Library. So it's not too far from here. It's 20 miles out of 101. Uh, it's also installations with, uh, with DC fast chargers. So, um, and by the way, you know, on a lot of these situations, uh, we partner with, char with ChargePoint, with NRG to do their uh, DC fast charging deployments. Um, in a lot of these cases, they could not have installed one of these devices without an energy storage system because they, uh, because the host customer said, you know, you're gonna you're gonna kill me on demand charges. I don't even want this stuff, and um, and so the energy storage system can enable the fast charging deployment. Um, just some of the projects that we have coming up in the over the course of the next several months, and the uh, and the use cases that they're aiming for, uh, Shore Hotel down in Santa Monica. It's right on the pier. It's right on Santa Monica Pier. They are currently a uh, a lead gold certified building, and they want to go for platinum. And energy storage is going to help them achieve that. Uh, Museum of Art and History down in Lancaster, California. They are probably going to be the first city in the country to go net zero. So you know their their consumption and uh, they're going to locally produce you know everything that they consume. Um, you know being a net zero footprint city. So energy storage obviously is going to play a big role in, in their aims. Um, and we're going to deploy an energy storage system uh, down there over the course of the next two months. Uh, UPS, uh, this is going to be our largest behind meter installation in New York. Uh, 300 kilowatt, 300 kilowatt hours. And uh, so the application there is just pure and simple demand charge reduction. Uh, the, you know, by the way, across all of these systems that we have deployed on a pure cash basis, the payback is less than five years. So it's, it's really good and it's an easy sell. Um, and finally, Walgreens, we did the installation already uh, this past month. Uh, we are going through interconnection right now uh, at a Walgreens facility in Yonkers, New York. And, uh, and I appreciate what, what Andy mentioned about interconnection. 
uh, surprisingly enough, though, our experience with interconnection in California really has not been all that bad. I mean, compared to what we went through in New York, which was an absolute bear. Uh, hopefully, there isn't anybody from New York here in Scrap. Um, but uh, but we said to ourselves, if we can get through New York, Con Edison interconnection, you know, everything else is much easier. And it has, in fact, been the case. Um, so anyway, this is, uh, this, is, this is the wave coming. I mean, this is where all of us here in this room are going to look back 10 years from now and say to each other, well, you know, all, of course we have an energy storage system. Don't, don't you, you know, at our facility? Um, it's not going to, it's, it's very much so like, like solar. I mean, I, 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 I hear a lot of people tell me that this industry is like solar from eight years ago, from 10 years ago. And that's, that's really the case. We're just at the beginning of a wave. But the point is, energy storage is economic today. We're selling it uh, today, and we're getting massive amounts of adoption. Uh, it works best for facilities with spiky loads um, and uh, in large appliances like EV chargers. Um, so the CNI market, uh, retail, municipal cities are uh, they're all taking notice of, of the movement. Um, and I think ultimately it's really good for the entire value chain from utilities on down. I mean, what we're really doing here is increasing the utilization and efficiency of the entire grid and uh, using assets, you know, cables and transformers that are in the ground today. So I think ultimately it is good for everybody. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, on your slides, uh, all cases are uh, maybe a uh, small one systems. I can see only one leg. Also installed on a 7-Eleven uh, store or the uh, city hall. So it means that the, uh, the peak demand uh, are smaller than office buildings. So in office buildings, um, if they, they want to install your systems, is it economical? Absolutely. Um, in fact, we the largest system that we're going to be installing over the next two quarters is half a megawatt. And what we do in that case is put a bunch of the 30 kilowatt modules together uh, and, and put them all together. into. You know, so each one of those are modules that could be combined into a much larger system. We have one question over here. Yes, please. Uh, I, you mentioned about the battery, uh, but uh, I wonder um, what kind of technology uh, is uh, actually you're using for the for making this this kind of batteries? Lithium ion. Okay, so no more. Like, and then what? Have you done uh, any case studies on the on the light types of uh, of those uh, batteries? And, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, we have you know two and a half years of operating data on these systems. You know, having them installed uh, for more than two and a half years, uh, and we have been capturing all the data you know on a second by second basis, so we could see exactly what what goes on down to the very you know finite details. And we have shared those results with the battery manufacturers. Um, and you know, as a result, you know, we have been, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success working with ba large battery lithium-ion battery uh, vendors because we have data to prove, you know, this is exactly what what we're using their battery packs for. Um, and so, the short answer to your question is, yeah, absolutely, we have a lot of uh, data, uh, in operating data, and, and, and usage and, and life cycle data. Thank you. One more question over here. Hi, Vic. Uh, my name's Shane with uh, Bosch Energy Storage, and just you showed the the square wave on the was it the Walgreens? Yeah, I think that was a Seven Eleven or Seven Eleven. Uh, just curious about how you uh, operated those controls. If those were manual, programmed, or um, operating on the fly. How that works. Yeah, that's so. That's the software algorithm that we have been perfecting over the last four years of our existence. So, 
um, it's I, I sort of liken it to stock trading. You know, it's it's really easy at the end of the trading day to say, all right, I should have bought it in the morning when the price is low, so in the afternoon when the price is high. But in real time, on a second by second basis, we're you know charging and discharging with imperfect information. Right, we don't know where the building loads are going to go next. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a stochastic. Uh, algorithm, predictive algorithm that we have been fine tuning for the past four years. All right, well, I think we have to cut off the questions, but I'd like us to take a moment to thank all of our speakers. Thank you.